All right, so here's where we left off after our last video. Uh, we went ahead and created our template for our agenda. And at this point, hopefully you've gone ahead, found your information and have started to fill in your classes and teachers, their after school days and their emails. Uh, I do wanna go over a couple other things that we can do in spreadsheets. Um, some of which will actually be really useful for us later on in our engineering class as we start working with more data. Um, a couple things that I do want to recap from the first video, though, is just some simple formatting stuff. So in the first video, we talked about how we bolded this text. We did it really quickly, so to cover it again, if you want to bold text or say you want to change the size of specific text, the color of specific text, it's very easy to do in a spreadsheet. All you have to do is select the text you want highlighted. In this case, we're selecting all of the headers, so you can either click on them individually, you could click and drag to select multiple, or since all of our headers are in a single row, I can click on the row number and it selects them all. From there, I can come up here to our toolbar and select my different text options. So in our first video, we decided we wanted those headers bolded so that we could see them better. You may decide you want them to be a slightly different size. You may decide that you want them to be a different color. You have all of those options right up here. Uh, if you don't see this toolbar, you may have to find these three little dots to click more, or you may have to show all of your menus, but these tools are here in Google Sheets for you to use. Now you'll see that since I adjusted the size of our text, the after school day column is a little bit cramped and my text doesn't totally fit in there. So at this point, continuing on with formatting, we do have the ability to change the width of our columns so that it fits the text better. Again, we might have gone over this quickly in the previous video, so just a little bit more in depth. If I want to expand column G so that that after school day text fits in there a little bit more neatly, all I'm gonna do is hover my cursor over this little line between column G and H. And you'll see that as I hover, it changes from my normal cursor to this stretchy arrow cursor. And all I do from here is click and drag. And that allows me to change the size of that column. Now let's say as I start adding emails in here, that I have a couple of columns that I need to resize. So I've got both the after school day column and the teacher email column that the text doesn't quite fit. I can resize both of these columns at the same time by clicking on both columns and then coming and finding that little line. In order to select both columns, you can either click and drag or you can click one column, hit the shift key on your keyboard and hold it down while you select the other column. And then when you click and drag, you can see that applies to both of those columns. One other option that we have for resizing, if I'm just resizing this column, is I can come down here and right click on my column, get this menu and find the resize column option. You can set a specific number of pixels, uh, but unless you know the specific number of pixels, it might just be easier for you to fit the column to the data. So this will automatically adjust the width of the column to fit your longest piece of data in it. So that can be super useful for things like emails, it can be useful for things um, like start to end times, or days where you know that it's going to be a little bit larger than normal, uh, but not necessarily a whole paragraph. Now there might be a time, whether it's in engineering or further down the line, where you are typing notes in spreadsheets to help you remember things about your data. And as I'm typing these notes in, if I keep expanding my columns, then pretty soon I'm not gonna be able to see everything on one page, and I'm gonna to have to keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. So one other thing that we can do is rather than expanding our column by sliding it, is we could also wrap the text within the column. So if you select the cell that you're working in and come back up here to your toolbar, this icon right here, as you hover over it, you can see that it's for text wrapping. If I click on that little carrot and hover over this, you can see that we currently have the overflow option selected, which means that as I type, 
all of my extra text is just going to spill over into the next column. But if I have text in that next column, it's just going to get covered up and cut off. So instead, I'm going to wrap my text. And you can see that by clicking that button, it automatically adjusts not the width of my column, but the height of my row and tells my text to go into new rows within that cell. So it kind of creates a little paragraph for me. It's important to note that it won't do that automatically if you just expand the height of the row. You do actually have to tell it to wrap your text. So that is something that you can also do to help keep your spreadsheets a little bit neater. Other things that you can do to help you out include filling in colors and doing some shading. So maybe we want to shade out our lunch break uh, because it's not a full class, but just a, a chance for us to take a break and step away from our computer. In the previous video, we used the fill tool to black out these columns I'm not, sorry, these not these columns, these cells, uh, because we didn't have a class, we didn't have a teacher, we didn't have an after school day or an email. And that's one way to go about things. Uh, instead of blacking out those individual cells, though, we can also select that entire row and come back to our fill color and select a slightly lighter color like one of these grays and gray out that row. Now you'll see that since I selected the whole row, it keeps spilling all the way down to column Z. If you don't want that to happen, you can also select the individual cells by clicking and dragging, and we gray out that lunch break row. Awesome. You might also remember from our original video that we added that lunch break row by coming over to our rows on the side and right clicking to get this menu right here. So you'll see in this menu that you have the option to insert rows both above and below. So depending on where you're at and what data you've already put into your spreadsheet, maybe you want to start putting in the breaks in between your classes. So you can come to row two, which is period one, and if you want to insert a row below that to show the break between first period and third period, you can. Or you could come to period four, which is in row six, right click and insert a row above to show the break between second period and fourth period. So you have those options. If you inserted a row and it wasn't the one you thought, you can really easily delete that row so that you don't need to see it anymore. Or if you're just focusing on a couple of things, let's say you only want to focus on your classes before lunch, you can also select rows and hide them by clicking on this button right here. Once you've hidden rows, you'll see that you have this little expander tool. You can click on it to expand and show you those rows all over again. You can also go ahead and right click to unhide rows. So all of those things that we just chatted about are helping us to create and format our spreadsheet so that we like the way it looks and we like the way it functions. A couple things that will help us when using our spreadsheets to help sort and analyze data include creating filters and using equations. The first thing, creating a filter, is going to allow us to help sort through our classes depending on the data in our spreadsheet. In order to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in this empty square up top and you'll see that that selects my entire spreadsheet, so all the columns, all the rows. Once I have that selected, I'm going to come to my toolbar up here and click on this funky little Y, which when I hover over it, you see that it gives me the option to create a filter. When I click on that, it went ahead and put this little triangle in the top of all of my columns. Now I can go ahead and sort through using that little triangle. So when I click on it, it gives me this menu and I have all of these options to help me sort through my data. If I wanted to, I could sort alphabetically. So I can click sort A to Z and it rearranges so that now all of my Tuesday through Friday, which is my lunch break, or Tuesday, Thursday classes are first because T comes before W in the alphabet. I could also choose to unselect certain blocks 
so that now I'm only looking at my Wednesday through Friday classes or my Wednesday Friday classes. So you have these options to help you sort through your data and find what you're looking for a little bit more easily. So now that we've gone ahead and done our class days, you can see that now our class periods are all out of whack. So if we wanted to put them back in order, I can come over here to my period number column and sort A through Z and it will sort those numerically. You'll see that our lunch break does kind of get out of whack, so you may have to play around with putting things in order um, depending on, let's try time. Let's try putting things in order based on what time our class starts. Hey, there we go, that puts our lunch break right back where we want it. So you can play around within your agenda and sort things differently. Maybe it helps you just to see your Tuesday, Thursday classes. Maybe it helps you uh, to see things in order for all your classes. Maybe you want to sort through what your teacher's after school day is so that you can check it out uh, by the day of the week. In our agenda, play around and see what works for you. But I also wanna show you some functions of using those filters in a different spreadsheet. So this is a spreadsheet that we created last year when we were doing our CO2 car racing. So you can see that we have a whole bunch of different names, the types of their cars, the weights of their cars, the lane they raced in, and the time. And then if the following columns are grayed out, that is because they did not win that race, so they did not advance. So you can see I already have applied a filter and I already have uh, these little triangles. So as I'm sorting through this data, maybe I want to sort through and see how all of the wedge cars did so I can unclick rail. So now I can look just at my wedge cars and analyze this data. Or maybe I want to analyze just the rail cars. Oh, there's just the one. But I can still select it and analyze just that data. Maybe I want to go through and see how cars did based on their weight. So when I sort it, it go, went ahead and put the heavier cars first. So all the heavier cars had much slower times, like three and four seconds. And then for some of the cars, as we got lighter in weight, we got faster in time. So the lightest car has 1.4 seconds. So you can sort things and see looking for trends um, if things like that emerge. We could also sort by lane. Sometimes people will say, oh, my car was in lane one and lane one never wins. We could disprove them really easily by seeing that, hey, yeah, this car that was in lane one didn't win, but this car that was in lane one did and advanced to the third or even the fourth round of racing. So those are some really great ways to use those filters to help you analyze your data uh, once you get a larger spreadsheet together. The last thing that we'll chat about when talking about spreadsheets is going to be using equations within a spreadsheet. So for this, I don't wanna mess with our agenda, so I'm just going to add a new sheet so that we have a new blank canvas to play with. So when we're using equations, this can be really helpful when we are trying to process data. Um, so using things that we've input in order to get different information from it. So maybe let's hypothesize that we are in a math class and we are trying to look at a whole bunch of numbers. So for this example, let's imagine that we are trying to figure out the area of a whole bunch of different triangles. Now we might remember that the equation for finding the area of a triangle is one half of the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle. So we're going to use equations within our sheet to help us process our data uh, applying that equation. So if I set up some columns real fast, let's say this column is for my base, this one is for my height, and this one is where we will put our area. Now I'm just going to put in a whole bunch of numbers so we have the bases and the heights. Now there are a couple of ways we can go about this. If we just wanted to find out Say we wanted to check ourselves 
and see if we were doing this one problem correctly, we can do it cell by cell. In order for us to start an equation, we're always going to start by putting the equal sign first, and that tells the sheet, hey, I'm about to enter an equation. Now, when we're entering an equation in sheets, we might have to do it a little bit differently than we're used to writing it out, say, on paper, uh, because we do have to think about the order of operations. So I'm going to think about my parentheses first, and I'm going to think about what's inside them, which is my base times my height. Now, instead of actually typing out 3 multiplied by 4, I can click on the column, and you'll see that it grabbed cell A4 and put its data in there for me. So I can go ahead and click on that, multiply by the data in column B4, and close my parentheses. So that's my base times height, and you can see as I'm going through, it's automatically doing some calculations for me and showing me that along the way. And I just have to divide it by 2, or cut it in half, and when I hit enter, it automatically displays that value uh, processed after the equation. Sorry about that FedEx truck in the background. So we can do it cell by cell for each one of these individually. But since we know that we are applying that same equation to all of these rows, we could also do this a little bit differently. So instead of selecting a specific cell, I'm going to say that I want data from column A in this specific row. So by clicking on that column, it's going to automatically pick the data from this column and this row and pull it for me. Now you'll see why this is great in just a second, because I can type it in one time, and then I can just go ahead and copy, so I hit Control C, and paste it in each cell following, uh, and it goes ahead and changes the information it's grabbing so that it can complete that equation for that specific row given the data from those columns. So these are some great ways that you can apply equations. Now if you're curious as to all of the equations that Sheets has to offer, if you go up to help, you can find a function list here which shows you all of the different equations and functions that you can do in Sheets, and there are a ton of them. We won't be using all of them in engineering, but it is kind of cool to look through and see all of the things that you could do. Now with that, we've covered a lot of information, uh, but I do have one last question for you to answer, and this is something you are going to put on your spreadsheet before you turn it in. And that is this question. So what tool can you use if you wanted to sort your classes so that you only have to view your odd classes? We talked about it a little bit earlier and it is going to be this filter tool so that you can sort through either by your period number or by your class days and view just your odd classes. Make sure you answer this question. Uh, you can just put it down here right at the bottom of your agenda and answer it. Make sure you put that in the agenda that you are turning in.